in in the in the, the eighteenth and nineteenth century, atheists de- developed a, a wide range of, of ways of attacking the Bible. Uh, some of them were thinking about some of them completely bizarre, and uh, among the the, the attacks they made in the Bible is that the claim that the Bible is evil and encourages immoral activities in its readers was an attack that that failed to make much headway in the in the 19th century it was effectively abandoned by the end of the the 19th century but it's been revived in the 21st century by by the the modern skeptics starting uh with the, the sort of new atheists in the early 2000s and the the attack looks something like this it's the the, the claim that the bible teaches uh, immoral ideas such as uh, evil divine actions, things like like the flood. So the the idea is that God kills. And it's rather interesting because what they say is God killed babies and pregnant women with the flood. He killed everybody, of course, but um, the, they they pick on those. The, the, the ten plagues of Egypt, the innocent Egyptians suffered because uh, God was taking revenge on Pharaoh for his uh, his his ideas. He, there's the idea that they've gone as far as, as uh, health by destruction, which, of course, isn't in the Bible at all. Um, but uh, the idea of an eternal torment, they say, there you go. That shows that, that the God of the Bible is an evil being. Um, the uh, the idea that uh, the Israelites were commanded to uh, destroy the Canaanites and drive them out of the land of Canaan. Uh, that's seen as being a, a dreadful piece of, of genocide, and genocide is obviously wrong. So there you are, the Bible is promoting uh, evil things. Uh, the slavery, of course, comes in, and there's the idea of re- religious persecution, which is commanded that what it is is there is that the people weren't allowed to uh, sacrifice to idols, and uh, certainly some of the sacrifice to idols was was punishable by uh, the death penalty. Uh, the, these lead to the argument that that, uh, that means that God is so evil that you shouldn't worship him because he, 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 well, he's evil, isn't he? Uh, and the, also the idea you should throw the Bible out because its only purpose will be a guide to ethics and the ethics it produces are so awful that you, you shouldn't uh, follow the Bible. That's the basic uh, nature of the attack. Now, those of us who read the Bible uh, realize that actually the, it isn't like that. The uh, the things that are being picked out are are being are being taken out of context. They're being looked at in a very shallow way. When you look at them properly, you don't get that uh, that from it. Uh, the reality is that these claims are not the claims that the atheists assert they are. And if you start looking at them thoroughly, you get a different picture. So the, the slavery in the Bible, what is claimed to be slavery in the Bible, isn't like uh, American secular slavery at all, for example. And uh, you get a slightly different picture of what's going on. And what's happening is that the the uh, the person who's using this argument either hasn't bothered to do the analysis, he doesn't know uh, what the Bible really teaches, or possibly they think you haven't done the analysis and you don't know what the Bible really teaches, and so they can get away with saying something uh, that will have a good effect, but isn't necessarily true on the uh, on, on a, a real rational basis. Question, are they deliberately superficial? Or are they just not bothered to take a proper look? They've got a, a, a gotcha there so they can go for it. Um, so when you see these uh, these claims, you should be sceptical about them. Uh, now, each of those can be looked at separately. There are a, a whole load of different claims. Each of them you can look at and say, well, is it what the, the atheist says? But that there's a sort of line of reasoning that follows from this, which uh, is common to all of them. That's the one I want to look at now. And uh, this comes from the idea that the existence of right and wrong points to the existence of God. So we start off, we say, all right, let's suppose there's a difference between right and wrong. Uh, 
right is really right. There are things that are really wrong. And this is a genuine difference that there really are things that are good and really are things that are evil. Uh, and the question you have to ask is what produces that distinction? Um, well, you can propose various things that the, the uh, you can say, well, you can work it out purely from logic. You can't. Uh, logic um, allows you to start off with some true statements and generate a large number of other true statements from those. But you have to start off somewhere. You have to have an axiom or several axioms which allow you to work on them logically and produce your conclusions. Um, so somewhere there has to be something at the bottom of the, the, the logic which defines what's going on. You have to have the idea of right and the idea of wrong and some way of distinguishing between right and wrong, or you can't logically work out anything to do with, with uh, ethics. Um, what about science? They go about it scientifically. One of the, the, the four big writers of the, the uh, new atheist movement was trying to develop scientific ethics. He failed, but he was trying. Um, again, it's going to fail. You can show it must fail. You think, well, what science does? Well, science works on experiment and observation. So science is about uh, what you can determine by doing an experiment or what you can observe. So you could observe an eclipse with a telescope. That would be an observation. Or you could set up something in a laboratory and do an experiment there. Um, I, can, uh, I can do experiments where I um, administer strychnine to a human being. And I can watch what happens and write it all down. And in the end, that will tell me what the effect of strychnine is on human beings. But I can repeat that experiment as often as I like. It won't tell me that it's wrong for me to administer strychnine to human beings. That will never be uh, an experimental observation. So science can't talk about right and wrong. And they talk about category errors. Science can tell you uh, what is true what's the true about something, what, what something is like. It can't tell you what it should be like. It can tell you what it is, but it can't tell you what it ought to be. No experiment will tell you what ought to happen morally. So science can't tell you about um, right and wrong. Uh, people like uh, Richard Dawkins have said, well, it, it's something that's evolved. It, it, it's the result of evolution. Now, Taking aside all the arguments about the, uh, the whether evolution is a true theory or not, it would be a scientific theory. For the sake of argument, you say it's true. It would be a scientific theory, and hence it would be unable to say whether something is really right or really wrong. Um, so uh, you can't say evolution accounts for the difference between right and wrong. And the, the last one that people propose is social convention. Well, social convention doesn't give you uh, an objective right and an objective wrong. Different societies have different conventions. So uh, social convention can't explain the distinction between right and wrong. So if there's a distinction between right and wrong, then we have to have something that generates that distinction between, between right and wrong. And we can deduce things about it. And first of all, it has to be an entity that's outside the system. Uh, it, it's, you can't have something which is inside the, 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 the system that generates the axioms. The axioms must be the starting system. And Leibniz's contingency theory theorem show that you have to have a, an axiom which is not part of the, the system of reasoning or that you have to have a cause which is not part of the effects. Um, so we've got some fundamental, some fundamental entity who defines right and wrong, and we can deduce things about him. Well, first of all, the, the entity uh, defines the difference in right and wrong, and uh, he's got to be outside the system uh, because he, he, if he's something that's subject to uh, the reasoning of right and wrong, then he can't provide the, the basis for that reasoning. Um, and it's someone who can put the knowledge of right and wrong into humanity. We all understand that some things are right and some things are wrong. The complicated cases where it's difficult, but there are all fairly simple cases where everybody will agree what is right 
and what is wrong. Um, so the knowledge is there as, a, as your conscience. And that means that we're talking about a creator, someone who is outside the universe and can put knowledge into the whole of humanity. Uh, and it's not a human being, of course. Human beings are inside uh, the universe and we part of the universe. Um, the other thing is that right and wrong are, are mental uh, attributes. They're, they're mind stuff, as it were, rather than physical objects. So uh, the entity that, that produces right and wrong has, has a mind. Uh, and uh, not only that, is concerned with right and wrong. The uh, the entity who defines right and wrong and who has put it into the whole of creation is obviously concerned about it enough to put it into the whole of creation. So we're talking about someone who really is very like the God of the Bible. Um, it's part of a description of God. It doesn't include the, the, the fact that God is very powerful, doesn't include uh, ideas of forgiveness and so on but nonetheless it is a part of the the picture we have of god so where we're at at the moment we've seen that if there's a distinction between good and evil then there has to be a creator god who underwrites that distinction and most of us would agree that there really is a distinction between good and evil so therefore we'd have to believe that there was a creator god um, that's the the argument from uh, right and wrong so, um, someone says the Bible is evil. That's only a coherent statement if there is a God, because it takes a God to distinguish the difference between right and wrong. If there's no such thing as evil, then you can't have an evil Bible. So we've shown already that there's a, if there's a distinction between right and wrong, then God exists. The idea of an evil Bible has no meaning unless there's a distinction in right and wrong so uh that's there so we what follows is that if someone uses the evil bible argument then they have to be acknowledging that god exists it could only be a a meaningful argument if there is a god behind them so the atheist who says that the bible is evil is actually admitting that god exists in uh producing that that, that statement and of course if there is a God, then the Bible is the place to find out about it. And uh, so using the evil Bible argument means that you should be investigating the Bible to find out what the God of the Bible is actually like. Uh, and there you go. There's the argument. <laughs>